Welcome back. We are still on the topic statistics. In the previous video, we drew a histogram for grouped data. In this video, we are going to draw another histogram for a grouped data. Let's consider the question that we have. It says that the following is a record of marks obtained by 50 students in a chemistry test. We have the raw data here. That is the max scored by the 50 students. The question says that we should I draw a frequency distribution table for the data using the intervals 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, etc. And I, I draw a histogram for the distribution. So the question is in two parts. For the first part, we are going to use these intervals to draw a frequency distribution table for the data. And then for the second part, we will use the frequency distribution table to draw a histogram. In the previous videos, that is the introductory videos, I explained how to draw a frequency distribution table. That is a grouped frequency distribution table for a data like this. So I will assume that by now you know how to draw a grouped frequency distribution table for a data like the one that we have here. And so I'll go straight to the part of the table that we will need to draw the histogram. I'll leave the link to those videos in the description of this video. So if you want to learn how to draw a frequency distribution table for a grouped data, you can watch those videos. So let's, let's move ahead. Now your frequency distribution table should look like this. We have the class interval, we have the tally, the frequencies. For this particular histogram, I'm going to use the class midpoints on the horizontal axis. So I'll, ha I'll bring a new column for the class midpoints. The question gave us the intervals that we are supposed to use, that's 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, etc. So if you continue, you have 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, and 90 to 99. When you find the differences between the upper class limit and the lower class limits, you realize that all of them will give you 9. You have 9, 9, 9, 9 for all of them. And if the differences is the same for all of them, it means that the class width or the class sizes will also be the same. And because the class width or the class sizes are all the same, then it means that you have the frequencies on the vertical axis. So for the histogram, you have the frequencies on the vertical axis. On the horizontal axis, I'm going to use the class midpoints. So you have to find the class midpoints for each of the classes that we have here. We have learned that you get the class midpoint by adding the lower class limit to the upper class limit and then dividing the results by 2. So for the first one, we will have 0 plus 9 and then we will divide the result by 2. 0 plus 9 divided by 2 give us 4.5 the next one will be 10 to 19 so you have 10 plus 19 divided by 2 that will give us 14.5 20 plus 29 divided by 2 give us 24.5 30 plus 39 divided by 2 give us 34.5 40 plus 49 divided by 2 will give us 44.5 50 plus 59 then you divide the result by 2 and that will give us 54.5 60 plus 69 we will divide the result by 2 that will give us 64.5 70 plus 79 divided by 2 will give us 74.5 80 plus 89 divided by 2 will give us 84.5 
And finally, 90 plus 99 divided by 2 will give us 94.5. So we have the class midpoints for all the classes. Remember that on the histogram, we are going to draw the frequencies on the vertical axis and then the class midpoints on the horizontal axis. Let's do that on the graph sheet. We have the graph sheet here. On the vertical axis, we will have the frequencies. And then on the horizontal axis, we will have the class midpoints, which is the max. The max are in percentage, so you have to indicate the unit, which is percentage. We will look at the values we have for the vertical axis and then choose an appropriate scale. Looking at the values here, I'm choosing a scale of 2 centimeters to 1 student. So you have two centimeters to one student on the frequency axis so you use that scale to number the axis just as you can see here the class midpoints begin from 4.5 and so i'll bring this sign here to show that the part of the scale before 4.5 has been broken off the next thing we have to do is to choose the width of the bus Remember that you have to choose the width such that all the bars you have will fit on the graph sheet. I will let each bar occupy 10 minor divisions. Let's begin with the first one which is 4.5 and it has a frequency of 4. So we have that here. The frequency or the height will be at 4. Since we are using the class midpoints, the mark will be at the center of the bar. Remember that each bar is occupying 10 minor divisions. So the center will be on the fifth division. So at the fifth division, we will have 4.5. The next one is 14.5. The frequency is also at 4. So we have 14.5. The frequency is at 4. And 14.5 will be on the fifth division. The next one is 24.5. The frequency is at 6. So we have 24.5. The frequency is at 6. And 24.5 will be at the middle, which is the fifth division. The next one is 34.5. And it's also having a frequency of 6. So 34.5, the frequency will be at 6, so the height of the bar is at 6, and 34.5 will be at the middle. The next one is 44.5, the frequency is 8, so the height of the bar will be at 8, and 44.5 will be at the middle. The next one is 54.5, the frequency is at 5, so the bar will be at 5, and the 54.5 will be at the middle. The next one is 64.5. The frequency is 6. So the height will be at 6. And 64.5 will be at the middle. The next one is 74.5. The frequency is at 4. So the height is at 4. And then 74.5 will be at the middle. The next one is 84.5. The frequency is 4, so the height is at 4, and 84.5 is at the middle. And then the last one is 94.5. The frequency is 3, and so the height will be at 3, and 94.5 will be at the middle. After that, we can add a little design to it, just as we have been doing all along. We will have to choose a title for our histogram. We will get the title from the question. The question said that the data shows the max scored by 50 students in a chemistry test. So my title will be a histogram showing the mark distribution of 50 students in a chemistry test. So we have been able to draw a histogram for the data that was given to us. So far, all the data that we have considered have the same class size or class width. Sometimes you may be given a data where the class sizes or the class width are not the same. 
in that case you have to draw the frequency densities on the vertical axis we will consider such an example in the next video so in the next video we will draw a histogram for a grouped data where the class sizes or the class widths are not the same bye bye